H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video with H2K Infosys. So in this particular session, I am going to take the concept of abstraction. Last session, we had discussed about the concept of uh, inheritance and we have seen the different types of inheritance that are present in the Java language. In this particular session, let us understand what is abstraction. Now, first of all, what is abstraction as a whole? It means that it is, it is nothing but it's a process by which you hide the implement implementation details from the user and the user is only provided the functionality details. So abstraction is nothing but a concept of OOPS or object oriented programming which says that you don't need to basically give how a particular stuff is working. What the stuff is going to give in terms of result that is important. Sometimes it is needed that we need to abstract certain classes or we need to abstract certain methods. So we will see these examples later point of time. But first understand the fact that what is abstraction as a whole. And that is why I have given this particular point that in other words we can say that user will have the information on what the object does instead of what how it is doing it rather. And in Java abstraction is achieved by implementing the abstraction abstraction in in the abstract classes and in interfaces so that the concept of abstraction in java is implemented in classes and interfaces out here so let us find out certain details about the an abstract class which helps us in creating a kind of abstract class so class which contains the keyword called abstract in its declaration is known as abstract class so before you declare the name of the class you have to declare the keyword called abstract okay next thing is that app class classes classes may or may not have abstract methods now abstract methods are methods or functions without the body it's actually ends with a terminator sign and i have given a particular example out here it's a public method void return type get is the method and it doesn't have a body part the body part will be within the curly braces so instead of curly braces we see there is a semicolon out here this is how you terminate an abstract method so it is not compulsory that you should have abstract methods inside an abstract class you may or may not have it third part is that if a class has at least one abstract method then that class has to be declared as abstract what i mean to say out here is that abstract methods cannot be part of public class abstract method if it is present in a class let us make it sure that the class is a public abstract class or an abstract class by itself we cannot have a public class and inside public class we cannot define abstract class if we are defining it compiler will show you problems or errors rather if you are trying to have an abstract method in a class declare that class as an abstract class the next point says that if a class is declared abstract it cannot be instantiation it cannot be instantiated and that is because of the fact that it means that you cannot create object of an abstract class that means if we cannot create object of the abstract class it precisely means that i cannot use obviously the non static variables and the non static methods present probably present in an abstract class and that precisely means that if an object cannot be created of an abstract class or we cannot instantiate an abstract class it probably means that we, I cannot use the main method also because in the main method I have to create the object. And 
and initiate or initialize the objects in order to get the result in the console. Now it might be possible that I do not have a main method in an abstract class, but it might have methods. So an abstract class can not only have abstract method, it can have concrete methods. Concrete methods are those kind of methods which have a body part. So until now, whatever methods we have created are nothing but concrete methods. So in those concrete method body, I may feel like calling an object if that concrete method body is static or other if the concrete method is static per se. So I need to create an object of the abstract class. I will not be able to create it because it is not possible to instantiate the abstract class out here. Now, how do you then use an abstract class if you are not able to create an object of the abstract class? Then you have to inherit it in a subclass. So, a subclass has to inherit an abstract class. Then, the abstract class properties can be used. So, we will see the implementation of these abstract class out here in some time. But before that, uh, there's another point that is given out here. If you inherit an abstract class, you have to provide implementation to all the abstract methods in it. That means if your subclass is inheriting an abstract class and if that abstract class has abstract methods, let's say four abstract methods in the abstract class and our subclass is inheriting that particular abstract class, all the four abstract methods will be overridden in the class which is inheriting the abstract class. Overridden means it should have the implementation implementation of those four abstract methods in the class which is inheriting the abstract class. Okay. So, now we will see an example of an abstract class. So, I already have my Eclipse open. I'm sorry. The last project that I created was session 26. So in this particular part, I'm going to create a new project called as session 27. Click on next and click on the finish button. And you don't want to change the perspective or the theme of this particular screen of Eclipse ID. So I will click no on that inside the source folder I am going to create a package called as abstraction package to depict that we are learning abstraction and inside this abstraction package I am going to create a class file and I will call this class file as let's say uh, employee class for example employees of a company and this I would like to call it as an abstract class so I will have to take out this also so it's a public abstract class that will be created I will not have to create the main method because anyway you cannot instantiate an abstract class or you cannot create an object of the abstract class. So where is the deal to call the main method? So I'll just click on finish. This is how the abstract keyword is been seen. It has to be always present before the class name. Okay. Now why did I create an employees abstract class? Now I will define an employees is nothing but let's say a, uh, it, it defines this class will define certain properties and those properties will be nothing but variables constructors and methods okay and the deal is that our employer will use this particular class to get the net salary okay the net salary depends on the fact that it is a salary after the tax cuts so if sorry so the deal is like this if we have a salary between 3, 3 lakh 1 and 5,000, the tax will be 10 percent or salary between 5,001 and 10, uh, 5 lakh 1 and 10, 10 lakh, the tax will be cut at 20 percent. 
okay now the implementation of this particular coding structure of this tax taxes will not be seen or need not be seen by an employer by by the a particular employee okay the employee a particular employee just can look at what is his name what is his number what is his uh, for example gross salary what is his address after that it will get the particular employee will get the details of his gross salary which is obviously knows that and the details of the net salary after the taxes are cut so based on this i am creating this abstract class the details of the employees class need not be seen by the a particular employer the employee will only see his name his address his phone number and the gross salary and the net salary that he gets he he will not be shown how this particular coding structure is implemented and that is why you create the abstraction out here so abstraction is nothing but i will abstract this properties of this class to be seen by a particular employee the employee will just get the details what he needs how it is implemented that is not of question for him and that is not of any kind of inquisitiveness for him so let us create this employees abstract class so an abstract class will be like a normal class only until unless we put the abstract methods so it is to be known that abstract classes may or may not have abstract method it is not compulsory that an abstract class should have abstract methods okay so i'll create let's say a private string name non static string type private global variable call name now until unless we have seen what is a public access specifier public can be used across packages a uh, one package can have one package can have more than one class so there might be two different packages or three different packages in a particular project and every package will have their own number of classes so if you defining a public access specifier it can be used across packages packages or, or any class present in a particular package a public access specifier can be used it can be used for for variables that is global variables similarly it can be used for uh, constructors and it can be used by your methods and class so it is a public class by itself we can see that okay so i'll have to do a block commenting for this so and we have used public a lot of time and last but not the least public uses the keyword as public similarly we have also seen default access specifier i have used it in one of the sessions so what is what do you mean by default default can be can be used in a package in a particular package that mean it can be, cannot be used across packages it can be used only in the package in which it's created okay and uh, default uh, access specifier can be used it can be used for global variables constructors it can be used for methods
and class also i can create a just an abstract class out here that is also accepted by the compiler because this means it's a default abstract class i'll turn it back to public a public abstract class can be used across packages a default abstract class can be used in the package in which it's created so you might have three different packages all the three different packages might have more than one class file and if you have a default variable it can be used in the same package in which it is created a default constructor should can be also used in the same package in which it's created a default class can be used in the same package in which it's created that means i can import the class in the same package if i import of a class is needed in another class okay and uh, default does not have any keyword let us understand that so we have seen public and we have seen default and today we are seeing private variables global variables so i will define it the only thing which remains is protected if i complete that that will complete your encapsulation also okay but i will not complete it because i want to show you encapsulation separately so what do you mean by a public uh, a private access specifier can be used in the class in which it is created that means i cannot use this private global variable in any other class present in the same package left apart across packages i cannot use this particular private global variable in any other class apart from this class even if that class might be part of the same package so can be used in the class in which it is created it can be used for this can be used for um, constructors methods global variables not for classes so i'm putting a full stop out here so private global variable means it can be used in the class in which it's created and the class is employees class so if i have a name of an employee there might be more than one employees in a particular company so that is why i have given the class name as employees a private uh let's say name number also i will put in string format because you know numbers can be a mobile number which can be of 9 digit to 10 digit and if get, if it is go if it goes more than the value accepted by a double type or a long data type or a integer data type or float data type it will show that uh, error will be shown that out of range so I, let, let me put it in string format number is nothing but the phone number of an employee and then i will have a private uh, name number and then with the third thing that i want to give is the address address also should be in string format done after that i will implement a i need to implement there is no main method because you cannot create a, a object of the employees class because it is abstract abstract classes objects cannot be created so that is why there is no deal of using the main method what i can do is i will have to create the the functionality for net salary so what i will do is that i will create a let's say a private non static method called net salary
method and this net salary method will actually give the show you the net salary after deduction of taxes okay and i can define one more variable called a private variable and it should be of double type because the salary cannot go exceed a 64 bit limit okay so double type i'll call this as gross salary net salary is minus the taxes from the gross salary so i'll create a variable called gross salary and i will do this particular stuff that if condition needs to be given if gross salary gross salary i have created as a global variable non static global variable so i can call it inside the non static private method if gross salary is greater than equal to 3 lakh 1 and gross salary is less than equal to 5 lakh the taxes will be your or the net salary will be i have to use a net salary variable out here that will be also a private variable private double type net salary call this a net sal so net sal will be net sal will be equal to gross salary minus now for this particular range let the taxes be 10% so i'll put the taxes out here within the bracket so 10% means 0.1 10% of gross salary this is going to give me the net sal so if the salary is between this 10% will be cut and the 10% will be cut from the gross salary and this is the net sal and then i can give a ciso statement something like the net salary is concatenate this with the variable net sal and else if if the gross salary i'll copy this if the gross salary is between 5001 is greater than 5 lakh 1 no, not 5001 and it is less than 10 10 lakhs then net sal will be i'll copy this and paste it out here without wasting time is 20 percent tax will be cut 0 0.2 and that will be printed out Okay.